One of the most frequently asked questions I get about my videos is, A sphincter says what? How much do you have to pay to use the clips that you use? Like this one. What the hell was that? And this one. You draw my wish. And to that I answer nothing, except for the time it takes me to find them and edit them. And of course the follow-up question is usually, well, how do you get away with that? Uh... So today I'm going to talk about the idea of fair use, a concept that's sort of fuzzy and seeing that I'm not a lawyer or an expert on these matters, I'm going to relate it back to what I'm doing as well as what some others are doing and try to give you as clear of a picture as I possibly can in these next five minutes on how we can get away with using others intellectual property in our original works. I'm not listening to you, you're crazy. My name is Tara and this is Truly Social. According to YouTube, fair use is a legal doctrine that says you can reuse copyright protected material under certain circumstances without getting permission from the copyright owner. Now, fair use is a US legal term. In Canada, where I live, as well as many other Commonwealth countries, the term is fair dealing. The fair dealing clauses of the Canadian Copyright Act allow creators to reuse copyrighted material without permission related to research, private study, education, parody, satire, criticism, review, or or news reporting. It's so boring. There are six principal criteria for evaluating whether something falls under the fair dealing clauses. Number one, the purpose of the dealing, or in other words, how it's being used for my benefit. What's in it for me? In my case, my videos would be considered under the education category, not commercial. I'm not making money from reselling the clips. Yes, I monetize the videos, but I don't sell them directly. Number two, the character of the dealing or how widely it's being distributed. This is fuzzy as my videos are on YouTube, but in general, I still have a relatively small audience. If I was a huge brand, I may have some more concerns. Basically, the bigger the distribution and profit from that distribution, the more likely it falls outside of fair dealing. Number three, the amount of the dealing or how much of the original work I'm using. Sir, it's only a tiny little thin one. Well, because I only use small clips, usually only about one to three seconds for each one, I should be okay. Some rules of thumb say less than 10% of the original work and I fall way under that. Number four, alternatives to the dealing or could I be using non-copyrighted material instead? Indubitably. Could I have used other sources that were not copyrighted? Maybe. But I could argue that the familiarity of pop culture clips worked the best in my case. I use clips to add color commentary to my lessons and they wouldn't really have the same impact if I also had to explain them. Number five, the nature of the work or whether or not it was previously published. So I interpret this one a little bit differently than the criteria was intended. Well, good luck with that. I very rarely use material created by independents and mostly use material that is commonly known. So the original intent of this criteria was to protect published or confidential material. And I instead think of it as republishing ideas that are already kind of in the public domain, even if legally they're not really in the public domain. Keep telling yourself that, darling. And finally, number six, <laughs> the effect of dealing on the original work or by using it, am I taking money out of the original creator's pocket? Show me the money. This one is key. Could a court prove that I am negatively affecting the market of the original work? I think I could prove the opposite. By using clips from movies and TV shows, I actually promote the works to my audience. Baby, hey, you are so money and you don't even know it. I've had people say to me, I went out and bought that movie because I remembered how much I love it. It is also necessary under fair dealing and fair use that I credit each clip, which I do in both my captions as well as description field on YouTube. I also indicate where I found the clip with a link. Not necessarily to the original work, because not all the original works have links. Totally name! All that being said, I'm not 100% immune to the possibility of being nailed for using any of these clips. If one of the copyright holders were to challenge me, I'd have to defend myself and likely in court. Guilty or not guilty? Oh, guilty, but with a real good excuse. This is a risk I choose to take. Also to note, I have had a video challenged. It was based on music which now I avoid, but YouTube Copyright Review determined that I was within fair use. 
Yes! 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 There are lots of examples of remixing, sampling, culture jamming, and mashups online. You may be familiar with remix artists like Girl Talk and Kudaman, who create new music out of mashing up existing artists. If you're a gamer, you may have watched Twitch or other live gaming, which is streamed from inside a copyrighted game world. You may or may not have come across something called YouTube Poop, video mashups created by editing pre-existing media sources for humorous, confusing, or shocking purposes. Channels like Honest Trailers and Bad Lip Syncs benefit from fair use, as do Supercuts, no! 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 derivative music videos, and vidding, which are also terms you'll hear in fair use circles. The entire topic is incredibly complex and is completely shaking the foundations of copyrighted IP law. On one hand, we want to protect creators from losing revenue so that they can make a living and continue creating. And on the other hand, we don't want to limit emerging creativity by new creators. But don't listen to me. For much more in-depth analysis and true legal insight into this issue, you should read Lawrence Lessig's book titled Remix, Making Art and Commerce Thrive in the Hybrid Economy. Watch the documentary RIP, a remix manifesto by Brett Gaylor, who's also Canadian, or follow people like Kirby Ferguson, Cory Doctorow, or Gilda Rastama. So the answer to how do I get away with using the clips? We'll see. You can't touch me. Until I get sued, my name is Tara, and this has been Truly Social.